Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie of Reason TV. Today we're talking with former Reason intern Jeremy Lott, the author of a new book called William F. Buckley in the Thomas Nelson Christian Encounter series. Jeremy is also the editor of the new website, Real Clear Religion. Jeremy, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. Uh, William F. Buckley in a Christian Encounter series. What's your interest in William F. Buckley? My interest in William F. Buckley is uh, that he is, was most more responsible than anyone else you could finger for uh, founding the American conservative movement. Mm -hmm. and there, that, there was a conservatism before Buckley, uh, various strands, and he found a way to sort of fit them all together in this fractious, quarrelsome coalition uh, that eventually uh, became a real force in American politics. His first big foray into uh, the public letters was God and Man at Yale, a book he wrote when he was, what, 20 years old or 25 years old, he was, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I would say he was 25. I'm guessing 25. This is part of a, your uh, your biography, which is extremely readable and concise in the best way possible. It's about religion. Uh, what was what's the God and Man at Yale about? Uh, God and Man at Yale was William F. Buckley's charge that uh, Yale was becoming a very secular institution, that it was abandoning its Christian. Uh, founding and that he was making the argument that the trustees of Yale should uh, work uh, to rein in uh, what Yale was becoming and, and turn it into a, a more uh, Christian institution. Um, what's the role of religion in, in National Review's uh, brand of conservatism? Well, I argue that Buckley's uh, conservatism grew out of his Catholicism. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, most of the founding editors and hangers-on at National Review were Catholic or became Catholic. Mm -hmm. It was a very, very Catholic environment. Uh, uh, well, it was equally Catholic and ex-communist, right? Yeah, but many yeah. of them became, became Catholic, right. Not all of them, but uh, c quite a few. Um, the Catholicism, people don't understand this today because you, you, you don't have the same dynamics mm -hmm. at work in Catholic churches, but for instance, at Mass, there used to be a, a prayer in, a said in every Mass to, to convert uh, Russia, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, there was, it was the, only uh, it was only the, relaxed. You know, the Virgin Mary asked for that in yeah. uh, Fatima revelation. There you go. Yeah, so. um, Catholicism was very, very, very hostile to communism, mm -hmm. and I argue that that shaped the thinking of, of, of Buckley and several mm -hmm. of the other early uh, founders of the conservative movement, and helped to push it in a certain direction. Is it the appeal of Catholicism? Is the idea of a, of a, of a long chain of a kind of historic, a transhistorical institution that at least tells its adherents that it doesn't really change very much? Yeah, and that the one holy Catholic change. and apostolic yeah. church. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about Young Americans for Freedom, which was founded at the very beginning of the 60s. Uh, it, it really kind of mushroomed before um, uh, Students for a Democratic Society. Um, uh, what was the, why did he found YAF, and what was the role of religion in that organization? A student, uh, you know, basically yeah. a conservative student organization. Yeah, I mean, the Buckley viewed, uh, you could so I have to back up a little bit and mm -hmm. say that uh, Buckley viewed the, the uh, arguments between collectivism and individualism as essentially religious in nature. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that gives him sort of a libertarian push to his thinking that will affect things later in life. Um, and YAF is a very individualist organization. It, it also, uh, in their founding documents, they talk about the importance of, of God and, and uh, mm -hmm. religious heritage. And they're virulently anti-communist. Right. Um, and this was sort of the youth wing of the conservative movement, which helped to put, you know, Barry Goldwater over the top in 1964, for instance. Mm -hmm. Buckley had a, uh, a pretty phenomenal 60s, actually. I mean, between YAF and then also running for mayor of New York and also the creation of Firing Line. Um, talk, you, you talk, uh, you recover the history of Firing Line, uh, which was, a, I don't know how many years it ran. It must have been close to 20 years on PBS. It was, it was over 1,500 episodes. Okay, and it, I mean, it's just, it, it's a phenomenal talk show, and you talk about how it wasn't just Buckley kind of smacking around guests, but he had a, a wide range of people on there and engaged them in all sorts of ways. Talk a little bit about the, uh, about how Firing Line came about. Yeah, it was, uh, it originally was sort of the precursor to Crossfire. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Buckley bloodying his liberal opponents, and he decided after a while that that was getting boring, and uh, it just wasn't what he wanted to do, and so he broadened it out, and he would bring in other questioners. I mean, he was still the star of the show, right. obviously, but 
just the, the wide range of guests is incredible. I mean, you know, Kurt Vonnegut, Huey Newton. Mm -hmm. What about, uh, you know, Buckley's uh, race views? How does that intersect with his religious views? Because uh, yeah. he, he penned uh, one of National Review's most infamous uh, editorials in the late 50s, talking about how blacks... Why the South must yeah, prevail. Yeah, be, or how the white South must yeah. prevail, because blacks really weren't smart enough at that point to vote. Yes. Um, is that a Catholic belief? Is that a Christian belief? No, or is that is it an anti-communist belief? Where is that coming from? Uh, he, he was his father was southern mm -hmm. and uh, his, he, I think he he put it precisely the cultural coordinates of our, our household were southern but I also want to point out that the the uh, remedy to this was a religious remedy mm -hmm. um, and in fact he Buckley wrote a letter to his mother saying you know how how can we support segregation if these uh, blacks are our fellow uh, Christians mm -hmm. how, how is that even possible mm -hmm. um, and the he penned that infamous editorial, and, and that position of the magazine lasted all of one issue. Mm -hmm. It was actually retracted in the next issue. Um, now, it should have been written, but uh, the, and the arguments against it, the, the Bazell Marshall, were constitutional, but undergirding them were moral arguments uh, sp springing from Catholicism. Mm -hmm. Uh, let me uh, let's uh, close by talking about real clear religion. What yes. uh, what is the site and what what are its goals? Well, it's an outgrowth of real clear politics. Mm -hmm. Real clear politics is the premier uh, political website in the United States. Here's your cheat sheet every day. You can go mm -hmm. to see what's happening in the world of religion as it. So is it going to be Buddhism is up seven percent this week? <laughs> uh, you know, we will have a Islam, section called Islam holding steady. We or? will have a section called Religion by the Numbers. Yeah. Why is why is Obama's religion a question of interest to people? Or, is, and actually, why is it why is his perceived Muslim Muslimism? Muslimness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I would say that's not at all unique to Obama. Mm -hmm. People were very interested in George W. Bush's religion, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of people who disagree with him vilified him for it. Right. That, the same applied to Ronald Reagan. But they weren't saying that Bush was a Muslim. I no. mean, they were saying well, they were accusing kind of him a hard of being case to a, make. a night jo uh, nut job yeah. uh, fundamentalist. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that uh, when people say that Barack Obama is a Muslim, there's a few possible interpretations mm -hmm. of this. One, they're just idiots. Uh, two, they're, they're saying that there's something sort of foreign about him. That mm -hmm. we don't, uh, three, the, the, the interesting thing to me was, do you remember when someone said to uh, John McCain on the campaign trail that you know, Obama's a Muslim, and he said, you know, no, ma'am, he's a decent man. Yeah. He, in, he understood the import of that, mm -hmm. what, what she was saying to be, he's a bad person. Right. I don't think when, when a lot of people say he's a Muslim, mm -hmm. they're saying, He's actually a Muslim. I think they're saying we don't like it. Right. What's the best that uh, religion has given America as, as a country, and what's the worst? I don't know. Charity, good feelings towards others. Mm -hmm. uh, if you like public schools, then I think anti-Catholicism was largely responsible for that. Right. But, yeah. Uh, I don't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, and the worst, uh, just the, we have a tendency to turn everything into a moral issue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in Switzerland. Uh, the, the, the job of the tax collector is simply to extract some amount of taxation for the government and you know you can negotiate with them and it's not uh, you know it's not a moral thing here Do you uh, feel comfortable with the Swiss Protestants guarding your Pope <laughs> your Pope of Rome well here's hoping you know okay. yeah it's amazing that that Bulgarian wasn't able to get him you know, you know. it's uh, sometimes uh, I think maybe there's there's some divine intervention involved. Well, if it's going to be for anybody, I suppose it's the Pope, although as a, a recovering Catholic, I firmly believe what another person in the Christian Encounter books uh, series believed Isaac Newton and many of the founders that the Pope was a werewolf and an antichrist. But we'll let that go for now. Uh, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV. We've been talking with former Reason intern and possibly future Reason intern. It's a tough economy. Uh, Jeremy Lott, who is the author of a, uh, a very interesting new book about William F. Buckley from Thomas Nelson, publisher in their Christian Encounter series, and the editor of the new website, Real Clear Religion. Jeremy, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. Yeah.